Our next uh, section is on acetabular fractures. Uh, these are uh, conditions. Uh, this is uh, question 25 from the uh, hip conditions module. It's a 32-year-old female involved in a motor vehicle accident uh, collision and suffers a right hip dislocation. Uh, she's in the 12th week of pregnancy and the evaluation of the emergency department reveals no other injuries. Ultrasound revealed a strong fetal heart rate and no abnormalities. She undergoes emergent close reduction, uh, but the hip remains unstable and traction pin is placed. Post-reduction films are shown uh, on the uh, x-rays. What is the most appropriate next uh, treatment management? What this question is asking you to do is recognize two uh, clinical factors. One is that uh, this hip is not concentrically relocated. And second, uh, asking whether or not there's an indication or, or a contraindication to surgical management of a patient with, uh, who is pregnant uh, with a stable fetus. So the correct answer here is examination under anesthesia uh, and open reduction and internal fixation of the, uh, of the fracture uh, pattern. So in this particular case is a large posterior wall fracture of the right acetabulum and unstable hip. Um, it, there is, uh, however, uh, increased risk of complications to both the mother and the fetus, uh, which is related to the severity of the injury and the mechanism of the injury, um, but not necessarily uh, to the trimester of pregnancy. Acetabular fractures kind of fall uh, much like um, uh, fractures of the uh, femoral neck into two uh, general bimodal uh, groups, high energy, blunt trauma seen in younger patients, and low energy in our uh, elderly patient, osteoporotic patient population. Because uh, they can occur <clears throat> in a high energy scenario, uh, there are uh, other orthopedic manifestations that are common. Uh, extremity injury on the same side uh, is quite common up to uh, one third of those patients. And systemic injuries, head injury, chest injury, abdominal injury, or genitourinary injury uh, are frequently seen in association with uh, high energy acetabular fractures. The fracture pattern is determined by the uh, loading vector at the time uh, uh, of the uh, injury of the femur, uh, femoral head within the acetabulum, um, flexion uh, and uh, is commonly associated uh, with posterior, whereas extension with an anterior based uh, fracture pattern. There may, may well be some questions regarding acetabular uh, fracture uh, location and describing the, the, the fractures themselves. The most common uh, classification system is the Latronel uh, classification. You have to understand first that the uh, pelvis is divided into two columns, the anterior and posterior column. The posterior column is com uh, comprised of the quadrilateral surface, the posterior wall uh, and dome. Uh, the ischial uh, tuberosity, and the greater and lesser sciatic notches. The anterior column is comprised of the anterior ilium um, uh, from the gluteus medius tubercle uh, forward, the anterior wall and dome of the acetabulum, uh, the iliopectineal eminence, and the lateral um, superior pubic rami. <clears throat> In approaching the, um, the acetabulum for surgical dissection, um, particularly the stopa approach uh, to the uh, quadrilateral uh, surface of the acetabulum. There, you may uh, see some questions about uh, the corona mortis. It's a anastomosis, a vascular anastomosis uh, between the external uh, iliac or the epigastric and the obturator arteries, the internal iliac. Uh, and uh, when disrupted, um, either from at the time of injury or the time of dissection, can uh, lead to rather profuse bleeding and consequently um, uh, uh, ligation is, uh, is indicated. Latronel's fracture classification is the most common. You need to uh, think of it as five elementary and five associated fracture types. Um, uh, and these include an anterior wall fracture, uh, which is simply includes uh, the, the wall of the acetabulum and not the column. The posterior wall, similarly, uh, posterior wall. Anterior column is the fracture which extends up into the anterior column. Posterior column uh, typically uh, exits below the level of the sciatic notch. 
uh, within the posterior aspect and posterior column, and a transverse, which uh, ex uh, extends through the acetabulum uh, in uh, both columns of the acetabulum. Um, the associated fracture patterns are both column uh, associated. Uh, the uh, posterior column, posterior wall, uh, which is, uh, again, a posterior column with an associated posterior wall fracture. Uh, transverse posterior wall, uh, similar to uh, the uh, simple fracture pattern, but with a posterior wall component. The anterior column, posterior, posterior hemitransverse. This is probably the most uh, confusing for people. The fracture pattern is uh, is within the anterior column, so uh, define the anterior column fracture first, and then look for a fracture pattern that is more horizontal through the uh, posterior column. <coughs> uh, differentiated as um, uh, by uh, the attachment uh, or lack of attachment of articular cartilage uh, with the axial aspect of the skeleton. The T-type, uh, similarly, uh, a transverse with an inferior extension. Uh, these are the associated fractures. So how do you figure this out? Again, uh, look first to see what uh, fracture, what column is involved. Uh, next, look at uh, are there any separate wall fractures, either anteriorly or posteriorly? And then is there any, ask, is there any articular cartilage and continuity with the axial skeleton? This question uh, is looking at, asks uh, the posterior wall of the acetabulum is best visualized on which of the following radiographic views. Uh, when we look at the uh, pelvis, uh, we'll typically obtain uh, obturator uh, and iliac obliques or Jude views. <clears throat> so in this, uh, the correct answer is the obturator oblique. Uh, so to review that, let's look uh, first at Jude imaging. An obturator oblique shows the profile of the obturator foramen. So when you're looking at uh, the, uh, the, the hip, uh, the side uh, that you're describing, in which you can see the obturator ring, is the obturator oblique for that particular uh, hemipelvis. And what it shows in contrast uh, is the uh, anterior uh, column and the posterior wall of the acetabulum. Looking at that a different way, this time on the right hip, uh, we can see the radiograph and obturator um, oblique uh, on, of the right hip and the anterior column in red and the posterior, um, uh, posterior wall of the acetabulum uh, posteriorly. The iliac oblique is essentially the opposite. It shows the profile of the involved iliac wing. So this is an iliac oblique of the left hip. And it shows the posterior column uh, up to the sciatic notch uh, and the anterior wall of the acetabulum. So uh, again, uh, with the obliquity, you can see the lesser, uh, uh, you can see the sciatic uh, notch, uh, the sciatic eminence, and you can additionally see the posterior um, uh, or the anterior, excuse me, the anterior wall of the uh, uh, of the uh, acetabulum. Treatment for acetabular fractures uh, requires uh, non-operative treatment requires um, non uh, dis or, or minimal displacement less than two millimeters. You want to examine these under uh, anesthesia and fluoroscopy to uh, test for stability of the uh, fracture. And uh, again, uh, consider non-operative uh, treatment for uh, those patients that are morbidly obese, uh, poor uh, surgical candidates, or in the presence of uh, DVT. Open reduction internal fi uh, fixation is uh, commonly recommended for these because of the need to reestablish congruency of the, uh, of the articular cartilage within the acetabulum. Displacement of more than two millimeters uh, is a uh, indication for operative management. Posterior wall uh, fractures involving more than 40 to 50 percent uh, are commonly uh, indicated for open reduction internal fixation, although you may see questions which um, focus more on determining the degree of stability of the posterior wall. And in that case, uh, uh, examination under anesthesia and with fluoroscopy uh, for stability of the posterior wall uh, is the, uh, has been shown to be the most reliable way of assessing the stability of the acetabulum. 
You also want to look for on your CT scan the presence of marginal impaction. A marginal impaction fracture fragment um, is uh, going to lead to incongruous uh, joint forces and uh, consequently need uh, to be uh, disimpacted and stabilized to try to uh, preserve the, uh, the uh, articular cartilage uh, surface. Outcomes um, with, uh, uh, tend to correlate uh, with uh, a number of factors. The degree of displacement, um, uh, whether or not uh, there was uh, hip dislocation. If the hip can be reduced within 12 hours, there's a lower risk of uh, issues with sciatic palsy and avascular necrosis. The degree to which the articular cartilage can be reduced. And interestingly, uh, in your post-rehabilitation, the strength of the muscles uh, around uh, the, uh, the hip that assist in gait is correlated with the functional outcome uh, for patients. That uh, is a question that uh, you saw in your module. Also, uh, looking at open reduction, um, the, uh, you may see some questions regarding how, where the stress to the acetabulum occurs. Uh, the greatest um, stress uh, on the acetabulum, uh, acetabular repair, is when rising from a seated position, and that stress vector is in the uh, posterior superior aspect of the acetabulum. So keep that in mind uh, when uh, answering questions about uh, movement and rehabilitation. Occasionally, uh, patients will present with a very severe comminution. Um, and or severe uh, osteopenia, osteoporosis, in which uh, we'll consider um, arthroplasty uh, plus open reduction internal fixation. Um, this is a technically demanding uh, surgical uh, undertaking, but uh, in uh, properly executed uh, save, uh, survivorship, uh, 10 years up to nearly 80% has been shown. Again, <coughs> um, uh, worse outcomes in patients uh, that are younger and patients uh, that are obese and those with uh, re uh, rather significant uh, acetabular defects. Uh, you may see some questions or likely to see some questions with regard to uh, your choice of, uh, of approach for management of acetabular fractures. The ilioinguinal approach or the anterior approach is typically uh, indicated for patients with uh, anterior wall and anterior column fractures, but can be associated with uh, uh, femoral cutaneous nerve injury, uh, femoral nerve injury, uh, femoral vessel thrombosis because of retraction, and uh, potentially uh, laceration of the corona mortis. Posterior approach or the coker langenbach is used uh, predominantly for uh, posterior wall and posterior column fractures. Um, uh, sciatic nerve injury has been uh, shown to occur uh, with uh, this approach. It may be more a function of where the, uh, the actual injury pattern is as opposed to the approach, but uh, the questions may reflect that as a, as a potential um, uh, injury source. Um, also, uh, extensile approaches, the, uh, the, ilio, um, the extended iliofemoral is the only approach in which uh, the surgeon is able to direct, uh, directly visualize both columns simultaneously. Uh, it's a very uh, helpful uh, surgical approach in these complex fractures, but uh, is often uh, associated with heterotopic ossification and consequently um, a, a prophylactic uh, measures need to be undertaken. <clears throat> Finally, uh, looking at acetabular uh, fracture fixation techniques, um, more uh, some of the newer techniques uh, involve the use of percutaneous uh, fixation, and you may see questions with regard to uh, determining the, the orientation uh, of those screws by imaging. Uh, looking at uh, fluoroscopic imaging in which an obturator uh, oblique uh, technique uh, visualizing the uh, anterior column screw can identify for joint penetration and determine uh, the position of the uh, supraacetabular screw within the, uh, within the ilium. Um, using a uh, iliac oblique, um, which uh, is uh, visualized in the skeleton to the uh, right, um, it's an inlet uh, iliac oblique, so it's projecting from caudad to cephalad uh, and obliquely. 
uh, determines uh, the position of the screw within the uh, pubic ramus. Uh, so the two images are, are uh, seen uh, corresponding there. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.